Juicy, juicy. Give it up for Jake Busey. I told him I'd sing his own theme song. Juicy, juicy. He's Jake Busey. Juicy, juicy. He's Jake Busey with the hot, hot caboosey. Live it up for Jake Busey. Give it up for Jake Busey, everybody. I am not allowed to rap anymore, I swear. You're, you're amazing. Well, thanks. You made me really want to dance. Well, good. This is the final panel of the day, and I think we've saved... Ah. The best for last. Oh, well, where are they? <laughs> okay. Well, first of well, all, hello. you guys, you've been such a great crowd so far. I'm going to ask a few questions, and if you want to ask them at the end, we will invite you up. But how have you been enjoying beautiful Manchester, Mr. Busey? I'm so glad to be here with all of y'all here at, at, in, uh, in your hometown here. This is beautiful. I yeah. love it. And um, it's a great, great, great trip. Everybody's been so friendly and so nice, so... Thank you guys for being so hus. Yes, it's very nice crowd. Yeah. So, what do you see? I can't even. Th I'm so worried about saying the wrong thing because I've been told we have to like not say stuff because of this strike that's going on right now. Um, yes. But uh, your hospitality is incredible. Thank you. Yes. Glad to be here. Very, very nice people. Very polite in Manchester. And actually, yeah. I think it's kind of more fun in a way to make all of the questions so much more random. Yeah, yeah, true. But I tell you what, there's nothing more energetic and lively than a German crowd. I did. Ooh, <laughs> how's that? Did a, did a show over in one of these conventions in Germany, and everybody's like so polite and so like German. Yep, yep. That the place is just dead silent, and you say a joke, and of course it's in the wrong language, so they're like they don't know what you're saying, yeah. and it just lands flat. And everyone's just very polite. Can you uh, be like a pity clap? It's so you... nice to be like, you know, with the yeah. <laughs> it's so a lively funny you group. Say that. Yeah, because you don't want to generalize, but I've done some wrestling shows over there, and they said, if they're not clapping, don't worry. It's not that you're not doing a good job. It's just that they're being polite. They're kind of giving you your space type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually, that was, no, it was Prague. Prague. Okay. And that's exactly what the deal was. And then when the whole thing was over... They erupted into a massive cheer and all that stuff, yeah. So, anyway, hi, my name is Jake Busey. I'm six foot three, 230 pounds of love. And uh, I make it to movies and I make it a TV show. And I like to do these things. Uh, I've been doing this a long time and many pr projects and uh, the film. Yes. yes. I was going to ask you how long it's been because obviously it's, it's the family biz, right? But when did you start? What were your earliest memories of being in the entertainment business? My earliest memories are from the 20th century. <laughs> uh, there was a time before digital. I remember we were shooting a film about giant bugs in space. Giant bugs? And... I remember someone saying, uh, you know, pretty soon we're going to be making these movies and they're not even going to have film in the cameras. And we were like, ha, you are, what are you smoking? Let me have some of that. And now, of course, the joke is that we have digital. There's no more film. For those of you that don't know this. So, anyway. Yes, the giant bug movie. Giant That's bug what I'm, people kind of remember me from. Um, <laughs> and now that things are digital, we're not working because uh, nobody's paying us. It's so strange. You guys, would you like to see more new TV and movie shows and all that stuff? Would you like to see more new stuff? Or are you good with what's already been done? Because it's a lot of reboots, right? More new, yeah. right? Yeah. I'd like to see... More shows, more movies, right? God, please let us continue. I hope, uh, I hope they, they do something about this. This is yes. frustrating to be able to not even uh, speak about what we do here at I this know. thing. Yeah. It's like we're in a, a secret society. I know, yes. yeah, yeah. But the way filmmaking has gone, it's changed a lot. We were talking to one of the actors uh, last time about how everything is, you know, motion capture now, and it's not like the theater where you can see people's reactions, and you're not even working with actors a lot. You're working, especially on Marvel films and things like that, they're doing motion capture. It's all green and it's all digital. That's got to be a very jarring 
thing to get used to. Yeah, I um, I haven't ever done any of those spandex movies. Would you like to? I don't, you know. Your I, eyes lit up when you said spandex. I think it might be fun. <laughs> Men in tights. Yeah. Um, no, but that movie was already made. Uh, the, 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 span, the, the Marvel things, no, I haven't uh, done those. So, so I've actually been, I'm kind of a Luddite. I'm, I'm still living in the 20th century as far as like the movies that I think. Um, but I, it is an art form because there was a film I made in New Zealand and um, it had to do with ghosts. I, this is so silly. I have to talk around. Well, you know, the reason that we're not mentioning the names of movies and the names of people we've worked with is it's a solidarity thing that our union has requested, the, the main body of actors, because we're having a strike right now, and the reason for the strike is that the studios the producers at the studios and the ones that you love to watch, the ones that you click on your TV and you're like, oh yeah, there's that show that's got all the kids on the bicycles to play Dungeons and Dragons and, and there's, you know, the one with the people from 1500s and so they have decided that they just they don't want to have to pay actors to work anymore. So they just capture us with AI and CG and then use that in like, you know, perpetuity forever and for free. So they're holding this strike and not negotiating with the actors. And they're saying, you guys don't deserve to be paid. We want to just use you and your likeness and your talent um, and, you know, take a hike. So that's kind of the reason why, you know, I'm usually not one to go along with the rules, and the rules today are like, don't say the name of the movies you did, because, but like today, it actually is important. Like, I got a kid to feed, so I'd like to be able to earn a wage when I, when I go to work. And, it, you know, it's fun, it's great to be in movies. People don't look at it like it's work, but there was a great prophet who once said, if you, never want to work a day in your life, then do something you love. Well, I, I love this, so I don't feel like it's work, but it is, and it's the work that I chose. And, and a lot of us, you know, all the rest of the actors here, you know, we're all, we do it because we love it, but it is also, it's, you know, it is a profession. So, kind of stuck in this weird place right now. So, I, I would love it if you guys you guys are all movie fans, TV show fans. I'd, I'd love it if you guys joined us in, in like, you know, if it's on social media or online or whatever, at least giving just a little, just a little quote or something, if it's Twitter or whatever, just saying like, you know, something on the behalf of the actors. Like, come on, you guys. Don't be greedy fucks. <laughs> Pay your actors and let's make some good shows. Yeah. So, let's get love it. you guys. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Hoorah. I love this front row we have going here. The enthusiasm is running wild. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Well, speaking of good shows, good films, what were some that really stuck with you when you were growing up or as you were becoming more into the entertainment business? Do you have any favorites? Some of the, my, my favorite films, the ones I'm not allowed to talk about. If I wasn't in it, it's yeah. okay? Yeah. Oh. We've been mentioning all kinds of things. We were talking about Star Wars and Titanic. Oh, and, yeah. right, right. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, growing up, is it, I think I watched The Shining out so many times that I wore out the videotape. Um, I'm, I'm old enough that it was video back then. Um, 
The Shining was a, a big favorite of mine. I loved the, all of the, the Star Wars movies, of course. Yes. And uh, Harrison Ford, he was one, he's one of my favorite guys. Yeah. I think Harrison Ford and Denzel Washington are like my two favorite actors. Those guys, too cool. So uh, I loved all the Indiana Jones stuff. Yes. And um, you know what's interesting is I love sci-fi movies and I got to do a big sci-fi movie that was Fighting Bugs. I'm not allowed to say the name, right? so. Um, and um, I wish I'd been able to do more so far. Maybe there will be more to come. But I really did have a good time doing the sci-fi movies, the, the few that I've done. Um, and uh, growing up, I was really lucky that my dad was an actor, and I got to grow. I got to you know travel, see a lot of the world by making movies, and it was a fun way to do it. Um, I, I recommend it yeah. to travels, anyone that... Your travels are taking you all over too, right? You mentioned Prague, yeah. Germany, yeah, New Zealand. Yeah. What are some of your favorite travel spots for work or for play? Oh my God, you know, I think that the, the film industry is probably only second to the military as far as like travel, like you get to go everywhere right so living in New Zealand that was amazing I got to do that uh, I lived down there for like three or four months on the ghost movie that I did and um, that, that that was amazing New Zealand is beautiful it's like California if it was an island and there was only four million people instead of 20 so a lot less trash you can drink the river water, you, you know, you can, you can catch a fish in the stream and eat it and not worry about dying from chemical poisoning. I would um, recommend that in LA, going to the lake and just, yeah, you know, no. fish through some dead bodies and yeah. No, and, and, and uh, I was a big game, uh, sorry, I was a big fan of that medieval show uh, that oh, was yes. on. yes. And, Had uh, to do with chairs. Going, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and um, yeah, playing with chairs. So, I, when I went to, you know, when I went to Prague a couple of years ago, I went to Prague like during the pandemic. And um, I went there because I heard there was gonna be a big Delta variant explosion. And I thought, I wanna go there. So I went to Prague and got the Delta virus. That was good. Um, and it was fun to walk around the streets because I did feel like I was in the, the capital city, you know, the uh, King's Landing, right? Um, different than Knott's Landing. Very different than Knott's Landing, yes. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, the, I mean, the traveling is uh, with the movie industry thing. That's great. I've, I've been able to go to a lot of great. But you know, um, I haven't been able to travel enough, and I can't believe this is the first time I've been to the UK. Is for, it really your first time? Round of yeah. applause. First time in the UK. I did not know that. Welcome. Yeah, baby. It's amazing here. I love it. I love it. The homeland. Yeah. 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 This is where my people were before they went over to the other place yeah. in the 1600s. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, yeah, I don't know what, you know, I don't, I wish I had a good comedic routine. I don't know what else to, <laughs> to talk about. I mean, it's great to be here with you guys, but I. Yes. I, we're I so thrilled that you could come to the UK for the first time. We're honored that you would pick Comic-Con Manchester for that. Very exciting. We yeah. have time for a few questions if you guys have a few, because I bet my girl Carrie here. By the way, our cosplay queen, thanks to all of our cosplayers, and she takes such great care of them. This is going to be good. I love the rainbow gal. Oh, dude. It's got pockets. <gasps> pockets. Pocket Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Said I could be anything, so I became a unicorn fart. Anywho. Um, <laughs> I just want to ask, if you were given both scripts to the Spacebook movie and the Ghostly Ghostly movie, which one would you choose if you were given them both together? Okay, the, the Spacebook movie and the... And the Ghostly Ghostly movie. 
Ghosty, the ghosty, ghosty, ghosty movie. movie. <laughs> I love her accent. She sounds I, much fancier when she says it. I, I, I lost one of my hearing aids on the airplane. Um, so, those movies were sh thankfully shot like a year and a half apart from each other. So, those, those were like just two big strikes of luck for me in my career. And um, I'm really glad to have done both, and I'm glad I didn't have to choose between the two of them. Um, they were both exceedingly rewarding to work on in totally different ways. And um, I loved getting to, I mean, oh my God, yeah, it was such a different thing because there was more computer graphics and like sci-fi stuff on the ghost movie than there was on the, the space bug movie. It was like, I didn't do any greens or blue screen work on the space bug movie, but I spent an entire month on the blue screen stage in New Zealand. And that's the hardest work I've ever done. And when you were talking about the Marvel stuff at the green screen stage these days, but they didn't have like motion capture. They didn't have like the, the butts and buttons and dots on your, like all that stuff. It was all very um, primitive. And so maybe it was more difficult. I don't know. You had to just like, you had nothing to work with. There was like, you know, when you see green screen movies and they'll have like cubes and boxes, everything's green, but like, places to, like, reference points, I guess, yeah. right? Well, with the blue screen stuff on, on that ghosty movie, it was just a silver floor, blue walls, and I had to pretend or imagine that there was a couch there and there was another and then a person over here. It was completely just, like, flying by the seat of your pants. That's crazy. So, and then the... Start, uh, the the bug thing was um, it was great. It was like summer camp because it was a whole bunch of us in our twenties, and we were like going through like this that early part of your adulthood where you're trying to figure out what you're gonna do with your life. It was like, but instead we already knew. It was like being in graduate school or something, or being. Or your first job. I don't know. We were all just young, together. There was like a, there was, I guess there was a, a, a group feeling that you get at school or a camp. So we were all in this one experience and sharing it and kind of growing up together and learning. And it was, um, there's definitely a coming of age aspect. Lots of just, uh, uh, the camaraderie, and then there's lots of difficult times, and through difficult times, when you go through difficult times with other people, you tend to bond with them. So those are like lifelong friends. Like Seth Gilliam, who's who's not here, but he's usually at these things. He's in Walking I've Dead. I've met him. Yes, he's lovely. Mm -hmm. Seth Gilliam. Yeah. He's a great friend of mine. And 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 then the other main characters of that movie is uh, Casper Van Dien and Dina Meyer and Denise. Richards and, uh, uh, and Patrick Muldoon and like we're all still we still have been working together in movies <laughs> little films here and there and um, I think I've done five or six different movies with Denise um, yeah and and so and Casper and I just did a western like last year with Tom Berenger and someone else so we I mean it's that was a great experience in life yeah and I wouldn't replace either one of them yeah it's yes, great question very cleverly shrouded question I do love that <laughs> two more questions here go ahead guys hi Jake hi Jake hey uh, welcome to the UK thank you um, I was wondering because you have experience fighting alien bugs do you actually believe in aliens considering they're in the news recently I think it's really interesting that they're in the news recently, and I think, I think they're, they're, it's, <laughs> I think it's just really in, it's curious timing, because there's so much BS going on with our leaders these days that it's clearly 
some kind of a diversionary, like, hey, look over here, like, in a big way. <clears throat> but at the same time, <clears throat> I think it's like, they've screwed up so bad. And their game that they've been running for years, while they're running our countries and, and running their freaking side deals and side hustles and <clears throat> get a you know million dollars on the side from Ukraine over here, cut a deal with this guy, get five million over here. And you know, that's all well and good in the 20th century. But then you add like social media, cameras everywhere, electronic digital banking, and now these guys that have been running all these frickin' side hustles, now you got, like I just saw in the news last night, it, it, it was like, there was this, this whole thing about the American president and his son and the thing, and did you ever know of his business dealings? And he's like, no, I've <clears throat> never talked to my son about his business deal. And then, <clears throat> thanks to electronic digital banking, and surveillance everywhere. They're like, oh, well, it says right here, you, you, you got 50 million bucks from China. Like, you, you can't hide that stuff anymore. So I think that it, there's, they're, they're kind of like, <clears throat> well, how are we gonna distract the masses? Let's tell them about UFOs. No, we can't tell them about UFOs. We, I mean, we can't tell them about those. They're like, that's all we got left. We got to let them know about the UFOs. And so now we finally get to know the truth about UFOs because they're like, shit, the war in Ukraine wasn't enough to distract them. So we got to let them know about UFOs. <laughs> Little green men. So, yeah, it's, I think it's just kind of the Hail Mary. They're just like, give them the UFOs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was a great question. We'll do two final questions here, guys, as our final uh, foray into Comic-Con Manchester. Hey there. Um, I was a big fan of the space bug film as a kid. Yeah. I grew up watching it. My dad was a big fan, so I got shown that pretty young. Yeah, um, yeah continue. Questions? Do you have any kind of interesting memories or stories from the set or the crew that you want to share? Oh, my God, so many. <laughs> that was like a year like an entire, like it was five months on location. Um, I mean, my buddy Aaron, who I met on a film, like Charlie Sheen and I flew up to La, uh, Vancouver and he was doing a movie with my dad when I was 17. And Captain Dale Dye, the military dude, who's famous in the film industry for teaching groups of actors to be soldiers. Captain Dale Dye, he surprised me one morning because Marty Sheen had said like, go out and watch the actors. I wasn't working on the movie. Charlie was working with my dad. I was 17. So they were like, if you're gonna, why don't you go out tomorrow and watch him train? And Marty says, yeah, but Captain Dale Dye doesn't like it if you, dressed like a civilian on the military base, so you, you, you know, go to wardrobe first and they'll put you in BDUs, basic dress uniform, and we'll get you out and you can watch them do their exercises. It's a whole platoon. So I'm standing out there, 17 years old, six foot two, 150 pounds. That's, what is that, 10 stone? <laughs> and 6'2", I don't know, skinny. And uh, here comes this whole platoon running by, and Captain Di goes, Private, fall in the line, get in the back, double up, rock, roll the double. And I didn't know what to do, so I, I, I followed, I jumped in with the platoon and, and ran five miles with all these guys that are now, like, huge actors. They were no names back then. But, um, so, years later, we're doing that film, the bug movie. Captain Dale Dye is our military drill instructor. And um, so he, he remembered me clearly and, and it, was, it was a great like reunion and 
and uh, we did the boot camp thing for three weeks and all that. And, 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 and so there had been this kid that was 17, my age, in Canada, and he had walked right up to Marty Sheen, and he had said, he said, hey, uh, you know, I, I, I'm into restored military vehicles, and I work on diesel engines and stuff, you know, so I know you guys got a bunch of these military trucks and tanks. I'll work on them for you. <laughs> He's like, well, okay, kid, sure, yeah, fine. Um, you got to love the brazen sort of just forwardness of this Canadian hillbilly, right? And um, so he gets a job, and uh, he winds up becoming close family friends with them. So that was 89, and in 96, we're doing Troopers. I'm flipping back and forth. And so Aaron, I tell him, he, we're still in contact at that, at that time, and I said, you know, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. I'm working with Captain Dale Dye, and I'm in, in Wyoming. And he goes, oh, yeah, well, I'm driving from Vancouver all the way down to Belize to go gold mining. And I said, well, why don't you stop in Wyoming on the way, on the way down? Say hi. It'd be great to see you. We'll have a drink. Been, been forever. And he said, yeah, I can see Captain Dale Dye, too, on my way there, you know? I said, yeah, come on. So he shows up. And um, he's one of these guys, you know, he didn't need a hotel room, camps out, sleeps in his Toyota Land Cruiser. Now, here's the point of the story. You asked for anything interesting. My, the hotel we were in was right next to a big freeway entrance. And there was a lot of big, huge, long trucks that would get on the freeway and then going uphill, it was, they were slow. And from the window of the hotel, you could see him. So Aaron says to me when we, so never mind that, but then Aaron shows up, it's a nice sunny day, and he says to me, hey, you ever made a potato cannon? I said, what, no, What's, what in the world is a potato cannon? Now remember this is 96. And um, he goes, oh, they're great. We've been making them all summer. Let's go to the tractor supply. Okay, tractor supply, sure, here we go. So we go to the tractor supply, we, we, he gets all these tubes and pipes and glue and all this shit. We get back to the parking lot and he, he <clears throat> proceeds to get his tools out and he makes a potato cannon in the parking lot. And it's like that long and it's got a big chamber, you unscrew the back, you put hairspray in it seal it up and you hit the, the a barbecue igniter and it makes a spark and you, after you've shoved a potato in the end and it fires the potato and it goes like a whole football field so we're in and it sounds like a cannon go like a shotgun i mean it's loud boom so we make this thing and we go into the hotel room on the fourth floor with the window open and we start having a couple beers and he's like, he's like, yeah, let's see how far that potato cannon will go now that we're on the fourth floor. So we wind up loading the thing up, getting the potato, shoving it in the thing. You gotta tamp it down like an old, you know, musket loader, <clears throat> potato. When you put the potato in, it like compresses the air and you click the barbecue igniter. And that potato, boom, it goes flying out and hit the side of a semi-truck and put a freaking hole in the, in the big box trailer as it was getting on the freeway. And he, he panicked. He's like, oh, no. He's, you know, from Canada. There's no guns allowed, right? But we're in Wyoming. But he's still, he's like panicking. We got to hide the potato cannon, hide the potato cannon. The truck pulls over and stops, and we're like, oh, shit, looking out the window, and the guy walks around his truck, didn't even notice it. Gets back in his truck and takes off. So that was the Starship Troopers potato hey. cannon story. A word of warning about potato cannons. I've actually used one, shockingly enough. Love that story. We've got time for one more question here. Good, sir. Thank you. Hi, Jake. I just wanted to ask, uh, well, actually, before I ask my question, uh, the bug movie, as it's come to be known, is your masterpiece? 
you, there's no opinion, that's a fact, just to let you know. But my <laughs> question was actually, favorite, least favorite director you've ever worked with? Least, least, uh, what scene? So, your favorite and least favorite director you've ever worked with. Favorite and least favorite director. Who? Oh. Wow. That's a big question. Um, I've had the fortune of working with really, really talented directors. Um, I mean, when I started out my career, I, I was about ready to quit trying. I was auditioning like four times a week for three years. All these projects, I had an agent that wouldn't give up. I was just auditioning like crazy. I couldn't, nobody would hire me. I had white hair, white skin, six foot two and 160 pounds. I did not fit in. And there was nowhere you could, you, there was no roles, you know? And you see like the early roles that I started getting, I was like the crazy guy in contact with the long blonde hair and all that stuff. So it took unique directors who didn't, who didn't give a rat's ass. It took directors who were like, I'm making the movie the way I want to make it. They would hire me. Um, so it was John Milius who, he did Red Dawn. He wrote Apocalypse Now. He wrote and directed A6, Flight of the Intruder. Um, he directed my dad in a movie called Big Wednesday, which is a surfing movie about friends in the 70s. Um, John Milius, it was, he, he had a stroke, so he, he doesn't really work anymore. He's an incredible director. And he, he hired me to do, to play a, a leader of a motorcycle gang in the 1950s in this movie with Carla Gugino and Gerald McCraney. And um, so getting to work with him was, he was an avuncular kind of guy for me. So it was really, it was great to work with him. Um, and if it wasn't for him, I was ready to just join the, the army and fly helicopters. I, I had auditioned so much and not worked, I was like, I was ready to quit. I was, I was over it. And I was at a friend of mine's house and it was a Friday night and my agent called and said, hey, that John Milius movie you auditioned for, they, he wants to hire you. So you got the job. And I was, that, that turned it around for me. So he, he was definitely a favorite. Um, Working with Paul Verhoeven was amazing. You know, people think he's crazy. He's just passionate, and he's, he's extremely talented. I have never seen a director tell a story so concisely. I think the reason that that Bug movie is such a cult classic is because it's... Like, I didn't understand why. And I knew it was good, it was fun, it was neat to watch. I didn't understand why it was so universally accepted and so universally loved. And it was because it's at the 15th year, the 15th anniversary, we, we watched it again on film at a theater in LA. Huge theater, big sound. And I realized it's a perfectly executed story. It has no superfluous fluff. It has nothing that's too, like it's timeless. It, it was not stuck in any decade or any genre. And it moves, it just like, it tells a story and it keeps you interested. And so, and working with Paul was, you know, he's a genius. So that was, again, amazing. And, um, you know, Peter Jackson, very talented man, very sweet, very shy. And he, he you know, I had a lot of fun with him. Um, I'm, I, you know, like, I guess, I guess probably the first big budget movie I ever did was t about tornadoes. And, um, I had a very small role 
and I'm thankful that I was cast in the movie because if it was today, they would do things differently. I wouldn't have gotten cast. But that director was weird and not nice. And he was so rude that he actually pushed a camera operator. He punched, I think he punched a camera operator and he, he took the camera and punched him, pushed him away, like just in the heat of the moment because he wanted to shoot and he had a language barrier and he just like, so the entire uh, lighting crew Don Burgess, who's like top guy in Hollywood, sweet man. He does all the stuff that, you know, like all the Tom Hanks movies and all the, you know, big, he's incredible. So the director of that movie was the guy that directed, uh, you can't do movie titles? So anyway, his name was Jan DeBont. He was not a nice guy. He was just, I don't know. I'd say he's, you know, as far as bad experiences, I couldn't say that he's like a bad person, but I was afraid of the guy. <laughs> so that's not really conducive to like work, you know. Well, we love to hear the backstories. Great question, guys. Thank you so much for that. Any final words for your fans here in Manchester, all of your adoring fans that have come to see you today? Thank you guys for hanging out and chatting and questions and great to meet you all and I know you guys have all come by my table and stuff so it's been it's been wonderful so far so I hope you guys have a great night don't get too crazy tonight Saturday night yeah we still have Sunday fun day tomorrow so we better watch oh, ourselves yeah look at trying to bring some Texas to Manchester yeah why not all right. ladies and gentlemen please show your Manchester appreciation for the incomparable Jake Busey why thank you Wait,